meeting will attempt to order. We are holding this hearing for a simple reason. Weapons programs at the Defense Department are one of the biggest sources of wasteful spending in the federal budget. Three hundred billion dollars in excess spending on weapon systems is a sizable amount of money. Two hundred ninety-five billion would run the entire government of the state of Tennessee. Our schools, our health care, roads, prisons, parks, and on and on for the next eleven years. At its core, this is a story of betrayal. The trail of our troops, the trail of the taxpayers, by this president, by former presidents, by members of Congress, both Democrat and Republican, by senior Pentagon officials, and by the big CEOs of the corporations that make these weapon systems and year after year after year overcharge and never deliver on time. At a recent hearing before the House Committee for Government Oversight, chaired by Henry Waxman, the star witness was a 200-page report. Do you uh, solemnly swear that the testimony you will give before the committee will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Michael Sullivan, who has been working for the Government Accountability Office for more than 20 years, wrote the report. The total investment has doubled, and delays in delivering initial capability have increased from 16 months to 21 months. In his deadpan way, Sullivan was laying out a scathing indictment of government waste. Those programs began and received a funding stream uh, that would allocate billions of dollars in investments to them over the years before they really had any true understanding whether or not they'd ever be able to build that weapon system. The report is not about how much America should spend on defense. Politicians decide that. The GAO's job is to make sure the spending is efficient and within budget. On both accounts, the Pentagon has failed miserably. Here are a few examples. The Joint Strike Fighter, built by Lockheed Martin. Its cost has risen nearly $55 billion just in the last three years and won't be completed until seven years after the initial deadline of 2027. The Expeditionary Fighting Vehicle, built by General Dynamics. This machine is supposed to double as a tank and a boat. So far, the development of a prototype has cost taxpayers $1.2 billion, a 55% increase over the original price. Two years ago, during its trial run, it could only perform on water if all of its armor was removed and if the Marines who were supposed to ride into combat on it left vital equipment on the shore. Despite this poor performance, General Dynamics was awarded more than $60 million in bonuses. The F-22, another Lockheed Martin product. Originally, the Air Force said it needed about 800 F-22s to replace the aging fleet of F-15s. Back then, the price was about $50 million per plane. Ten years later, the price had risen nearly 400 percent, from 50 to $200 million per plane. Although some cost overruns are routine when it comes to defense contractors, they've mushroomed under the Bush administration. They are now four times higher than they were under Clinton. All this overspending has led to a doubling of the Pentagon's budget in the last seven years, and that's in addition to the costs of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Even Washington insiders, hardened by years of witnessing government waste, have been shocked. I've been looking at it, analyzing Pentagon issues for close to three decades. I have never seen it this bad. Larry Korb was Assistant Secretary of Defense under Ronald Reagan and has authored 20 books on national security. Nobody's been running the Pentagon. This is the worst managed Pentagon I've ever seen because Don Rumsfeld didn't want to run it and he didn't have a deputy, Paul Wolfowitz, who knew how to run it. When Dick Cheney was Secretary of Defense, he brought in somebody from General Motors. When Mellon Laird was Secretary of Defense, he brought in David Packett from Hewlett Packett. You need a strong deputy to run the place. Wolfowitz was not up to the job, so the system just got out of control. President Bush was politically forced into firing Rumsfeld over the failure of the Iraq War. Former CIA chief Bob Gates, who replaced Rumsfeld, has taken steps in clamping down on excess spending. But according to most Pentagon observers, Gates faces enormous challenges. For real reform to occur, Capitol Hill will have to apply strong pressure. Up until 2006, the Republicans were running Congress. They did not want to embarrass the Bush administration, which was having enough credibility problems uh, with the war. When the Democrats took over, their people who put them in wanted to get us out of Iraq, so they just were not focusing on this. 
spending, already spending a huge amount of money, more than anybody else in the world, more than the rest of the world combined. Winslow Wheeler, a visiting fellow at the nonpartisan Center for Defense Information, keeps track of where defense money comes from and where it goes. Throughout his long career, he's served both Republicans and Democrats in Congress. He says a big part of the problem is outright deception by big corporations like Lockheed Martin and Boeing. Do they know what the cost of their program will be ultimately? No, they know it's not going to be the cost they're submitting. If they do think its initial bid price is realistic, they are deluding themselves. And while the corporations are cooking their cost estimates, many are also hawking weapons that are either unnecessary or not up to the job. They have a vested interest in making money. That's what they are, they're out for. And they're, they'll convince us to buy weapon systems we don't need or buy systems that don't work, mainly because that helps their bottom line. Some of that bottom line then gets funneled straight into the pockets of congressmen. Since 1990, defense aerospace contractors alone have donated more than $62 million to both Republicans and Democrats. Perhaps that explains why only a quarter of the House committee was on hand when Defense Department officials tried to defend themselves. Whether it's sound financial management or providing the American taxpayer with the most effective weapon system acquisition process, the Department of Defense is absolutely committed to the wise and efficient management of resources. The American people deserve nothing less. Chairman Waxman, Congressman Davis, Subcommittee Chairman Tyranny, and distinguished members of the committee, thank you for the support of our troops. Representative Jimmy Duncan, a longtime conservative from Tennessee, was one of many not convinced. And Congress is afraid to cut the Defense Department for fear of being seen as unpatriotic. Yet it is a very false and very blind patriotism that allows the Pentagon to continually waste mega billions and allows the Defense Department to spend like there's no tomorrow. Weeks after the House hearing, the Senate had its say. Members of the Armed Services Committee were as outraged as their colleagues in the House. This is sickening. This is unacceptable. This would never be tolerated in the private sector. Exasperating, embarrassing, very harmful to our attempts to provide for our national security. And the reason it's tolerated here is because we care about our military, we want them to have the best, and because, frankly, it's not our money. It's taxpayer money. Despite the attention the GAO report has generated at a few Capitol Hill hearings, it's hard to feel as if the Pentagon's excesses and mismanagement will be reined in anytime soon. This was, after all, the sixth such report in the last 10 years, and the mainstream media has failed to provide any sustained attention to the problem. As the election season heats up, we'll hear plenty of talk about lobbyists and government spending. If either political party truly wanted to prove its leadership on issues of waste and abuse in Washington, there's a $295 billion swamp at the Pentagon just waiting to be drained.